EB is not backing down. The cheetah is backing him. And who is killing it in practice? All that and more on your 8 August daily commander's update. Let's go. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to your 8 August daily commander's update. I'm Nathan Perry. That's the stoner. And we are ref the district on the Believe Network. Today was Military Appreciation Day for the commanders. They had plenty of fans out there enjoying training camp. And Stoner and I would like to extend our thank you to an appreciation for those fellow vets. Absolutely. Thank you all for your service. Stoner, it was one heck of a practice, but it was actually what happened before practice that was making the news rounds as mm -hmm. Ron Rivera talking with the media, brought up how some players came to him to talk about the intensity that Eric Bieniemy has been bringing to practice. What do you think of Ron bringing up those comments? Listen, man, Ron, Ron was, I don't even know how to say it. He had no idea he was getting himself into some hot water until a little bit later. He was just kind of being honest. That's, he's honest to a fault sometimes because he says things he doesn't need to tell us we don't need to know that stuff that that little stuff that's going on inside uh in commander's camp so he stuck his foot in his mouth at the end of the press conference he realized what he did when he got a follow-up and it was like "Uh oh i just opened up a can yeah this is not gonna go well and, and he was right Let's just listen to it in case in case you don't believe us. Let's listen mm -hmm. to the to Ron himself Going here. Back to the enemy and its intensity. Have players had to kind of adapt to that, and have any, I guess, sort of struggled with that at times? Yeah, I mean they have, and 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 one of the biggest things is 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 you know, and I I had a number of guys come to me and I say, hey, just go talk to him. I said, understand what he's trying to get across to you, you know, and. And I think, you know, I think as they go and they talk and they listen to them, it, it's, it's been it's been enlightening for a lot of these guys. I mean, it's a whole different approach. When they came to you, it was just they felt like Eric was riding them too hard or. Well, um, this is where he realized he messed up a little concerned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's, that's where. yeah, that's exactly where he yeah. he found himself realizing, wait a minute, I think. This is not being taken the way that he intended to be taken uh, yep. away. Yep. And it actually got worse, in my opinion, Stoner, mm -hmm. because we don't have this part clipped up. But uh, Nikki J did provide a little bit more of the context and the transcript there. And he he kind of backs into it and, and talks about being a coach. He talks about how he, as Ron, as a head coach, he's kind of learned to adapt himself to certain guys mm -hmm. that – Jack Del Rio has his approach, but he, as a head coach, has learned to do it. And uh, so he's. this is Ron Rivera here. Having been a head coach, I think Jack has a tendency to try to figure guys out a little bit more as opposed to, hey, this is it. This is the way it's going to be, that type of stuff. Eric hasn't had that experience yet. Mm -hmm. That stoner, to me, was more of a slight to EB than... Mm -hmm. T talking about how some of the players I get people, people are going to talk about which players are soft. A lot of people think that it's uh, a G who is going out there and saying that, but Ron definitely started backtracking there. And what I think his idea stoner, and this is completely Nathan just kind of trying okay. to see the idea there. You can tell to him that it was important for his players to go to directly to Eric B and voice mm -hmm. their opinion. And that those players walked away going, okay, I understand now why he's intense. Sure. All of that is all good stuff. And that's why Ron was trying to get that. That's why coach Rivera was out there. And that's the point he was trying to get across. And then he immediately realized he fell into the media trap. He has the, you know, not saying the beat reporters are trying to get him nope. or that, but this is going to get twisted in a way that he did not mean for it to be. That's what happens in the media. It is not something that only happens here in Washington. It's not something that only happens in the NFL or only happens to Ron Rivera or only happens with our fans. It happens at every level of every sport, really of every organization, public facing organization. They'll just say something, and all of a sudden, ooh, this is this is something that we can kind of blow up a little bit. 
all Ron was trying to do is saying, these guys are coming to me with concerns and I'm sending them directly to the source and it's all working out. And what we, and I say we, I just mean human beings, yeah. fans of this team, we took that to mean the guys are complaining and crying and saying it's too hard. It's none of that. It's normal. I promise you this. A Green Bay Packers player went to the coach today and had a complaint. I promise you that happened today, but it just didn't get out in the media. Mm -hmm. And that's where Ron screwed it up is Ron should know that something like that can't get out to the media. That's in-house stuff. And he thought he was saying something good about EB and his style. And it came out a little bit wrong. And then he realized it with that follow-up question from Nikki when she said, so our guys saying it's a little too hard. And he's like, "Uh Oh, that's yeah. not what I meant. No, they just have he, concerns. Yeah. The yeah. end. And then, yeah. and then just everything explodes the rest of the day. That's yeah. normal. It's normal. We promise you this is not like, this does not need to be the big deal that it is. This is going to be the 24 hour, you know, you're going to hear it Absolutely. in the morning from the, uh, from the, you know, sports, networks and everybody's going to talk about it and then it's going to go away yeah. because it really is a big nothing burger and eb had his time to talk about it here and let's yeah, listen am, to that. i'm an open book and i always invite players in but also too as i've, I've gone through this process yes i am uh, intense and i would be afraid too to start if i didn't know it but on top of that one thing they do appreciate is this i'm always going to be up front and i'm always going to be honest just like I stated when I first got here, we all got to get uncomfortable to get comfortable, okay? There's some new demands and expectations that I expect. I expect us to be the team that we're supposed to be. It's not going to be easy, and everybody ain't going to like the process. But when it's all said and done with, my job is to make sure that we're doing it the right way. Will everybody buy in? I believe so. But if not, it's okay. Because you know what? My number one job is to help take these guys to another level. And I can see it. We're making a lot of strides. I'm proud of these guys. It's been some, excuse my language, some good shit to watch. I'm always going to be loud. And I'm always going to be vocal. I'm always going to demand for my leaders. But on top of that, I'm watching everything. Okay? Body language. How we address in the huddle. How we're getting up to the line of scrimmage. How we're presenting ourselves. Those things are important because you got to send a message to the defense. Eric Bieniemy is is who he is. Okay, Eric Bieniemy knows how to adapt and adjust. Eric Bieniemy is a tough, hard nosed coach, but also understand, I'm going to be the biggest and harshest critic, but I'm also their number one fan because I got their back and I'm going to support them at all times. Love Let's that. Go, Nathan. I'm yeah, ready to come to love. Them. Love those comments from yeah. EB. And and this is something that's actually not unfamiliar, Stoner, with this coaching staff, right? You have Jack Del Rio and you have Ron Rivera, and they've kind of done a little tough love thing with Jamin Davis and a few other players. And some of those players who d that didn't work on are no longer here. Sure. And and so it's nice to have this and this this intensity that Eric Bienemy brings and that. This is, again, this is a guy who's been to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. And so you want, he, I think he comes from a place where when he talks to those players directly, anyone who came up to him, uh, as he mentioned, he, he's got open door and, and Ron Rivera had sent people his way. He just talks to him as it is and is like, listen, this is what I'm trying to do and this is why I'm doing it. And I don't think you're actually going to see any problems coming from this because where he's coming from and how he's directly talking to the players yeah and he's not being a jerk about it he's not he he's doing the tough love as you said but he's he prefaced it or he finished it by saying i got your back no matter what i'm gonna have your back i'm gonna demand a lot from you but i'm gonna have your back no matter what and it's a beautiful thing to see in that if you watch the entire press conference with eric b it was like 14 minutes i highly encourage anybody to go watch it after you're finished with this uh, video here. But they asked those questions right on top, and those are uh, you know some clips of his answers. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody asked anything about it again. They were like, okay, let's get to the on the yep. field stuff. I'm good. I heard what you had to say. Yeah. I believe you. Uh, you connected with me. I understand. I don't need to follow it up with, you know, snarky type questions like, oh, well, who was it? Were they complaining about it being, you know what I mean? They mm -hmm. were just like, okay, cool. I accept your answer. Let's talk about what happened on the field. Yeah. And, and I think part of it is because you have, he has a reputation mm -hmm. that precedes him and he has players like Ty Hill cheetah going out there and defending him. And no one's going to doubt a guy who is one of the probably top 20 players in the NFL. Here he is responding to an Edward or tweet from uh, ESPN Ty Hill saying, man, there is no other coach that has your back like EB Take that coaching and get better. We all been through. It's tough, but I promise you it will make you better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is, again, a Super Bowl winning uh, player. This is just good things are going to come from this coaching style. Learn from it and move forward. Yep. If they go one in five and the offense is struggling, then we can talk about whether or not the coaching style is working. But right That's now... Right. You need to buy into the system that the coaches are putting out. Yeah, and and I like everything that he said. He could have thrown people under the bus. He could have thrown Ron under the bus, even inadvertently, by saying something that would have got misconstrued again. But all he did was he did this. I'm looking forward. I, I'm going to be tough. I'm going to be loud. I'm going to be hard on these guys. I'm going to demand, but I got their back, and I'm going to make them better players. And that's all he said. He, he didn't he didn't throw any names out there. He didn't say anything about Ron. He just went straight ahead. And then they started talking about practice. And that's what you want. And it was it was funny, too, also that it's not like somebody said, hey, Eric, you got to respond to what Coach Rivera said. He was scheduled to have yeah. a press conference today. And it just so there. lined yeah. up that before practice, Ron did his part to set EB up. And I think I saw somebody on Twitter even say, Maybe that was on purpose. Maybe it was to set up Eric to excel, to be able to come back and give, because you know what he's going to do. He's going to be that guy who's charging forward. And so maybe it was to set him up uh, to excel. I don't know. Could be. I, I like that theory, but I doubt yeah. it. But <laughs> I do like it. It would be something. I think if they were to do it deliberately, it would have been yeah. a little bit, Ron wouldn't have reacted the way he did when Nikki followed up. The follow up, yeah, he was yeah, stumped uh, there. He was like, he he, was like, uh, he totally told, and he's not an Oscar winning. I've, you've seen the schedule release video. He's not an Oscar award winning actor. Right, right. He definitely was just going through the motions. Realized something happened, but it did set up EB for an excellent press conference. Definitely going to want to check that one out in its entirety. Uh, let's let's ourselves move on to the football. Now we've gotten rid of this right. uh, non-football drama out there. Montez Sweat is absolutely killing it out there, according to Nikki mm -hmm. J here. One-on-one -on -one drills, Montez Sweat is unstoppable. He How is. does that make you feel? Yeah, it's the same thing we talked about, Chase, a couple of days ago in the Daily Commanders update. Um, he's in a contract year. He has no contract for next year, and he's looking to get paid. Edge rushers get paid a lot of money and he's going to be on the open market. So he's got a lot to prove that's going to set him up for the rest of his life financially. So he's got a lot of incentive. And, but if you even you take that part out of it, he's a damn good football player. Mm -hmm. So you combine those two and then you combine the, the weakness of the offensive line, put all that together. And that's what you're going to see a lot of him out there just killing it in these, especially in the one-on-ones, but yeah, he's a good he's a good football player. He's, a, he's an above average football player, and I'm not surprised that he's out there killing it. Yeah, if he has himself a, a good good year, mm -hmm. you can see him potentially resetting the market for defensive ends. Yep. Uh, next season because he does have consistency behind him. Maybe it's not the elite level some people think, but if he has a good to great year this year, he, he's going to get a good uh, good paycheck come uh, next season. We can all look at his flaws that we've seen over the past four, and then this will be his fifth season, and we've seen the flaws and everything he's not good at. But if you're the Denver Broncos, as an example, and all you see is that this 
premier edge rusher is on the market and available, they're going to throw a lot of money. I'm just using Denver as an example. Somebody who's not seeing it every single day Mm -hmm. like we are. So, yeah, he's going to make a lot of money if he has a pretty good season is all he needs to have. Maybe it's here. Maybe it's here, but I'm saying it – teams are going to pay for that yeah we'll we'll see how that season goes for him and where he's going to get that paycheck somebody seasons in Logan, question we're here going to be really smart about that this is not close to what it was last year but the thing that we are concerned with is is we don't want to have it exacerbated by going out there too soon so we've really done a lot in terms of work on the inside um the work on the bikes and stuff like that to avoid that type of situation until then until they feel comfortable with him in the next few days we're not going to have him do anything outside yet that's uh coach rivera talking about logan thomas uh, mm-hmm. missing yet another practice stoner we talked mm-hmm. about the alarm bells going off uh here for logan thomas in this tight end room do you appreciate the 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 openness that coach Ron Rivera is having about Logan Thomas and his availability and their approach to it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, I think it's fair what he's saying. He's, and he's trying to ease everyone's concerns and saying, it's not like last year. Cause it was a calf injury last year as well. And they thought it was maybe because of the knee injury from before that some sort of effect, but they're saying it's not even close to what it was last year. I don't know if they'd tell us if it was anyway. But at least they're saying right now they're just being super cautious about it because of his importance to this team. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with how they're handling it right now. Yeah, this is a guy you know will produce when he gets out on the field, Mm -hmm. and he can learn the offense without actually having to be out there. So take it slow. Get some actual game time from him because that's what you're going to need. It is not uh, my pleasure to announce this (laughs) next bit here. Uh, yeah. But Washington has signed a punter, Colby Wadman. This is according to Nikki J. Uh, he did. This is one of the punters that they worked out yesterday. Again, Tressway is not being replaced. They're Correct. not looking to replace Tressway. He just has some tightness in his lower back. They're going to want another punter. Yesterday, Stoner, mm-hmm. they talked about how Tressway was going to play Friday. Yep. Now they're signing a punter. Does Tressway play on Friday against the Browns? I believe Ron said that he's going to do the holding on Friday. So he's still going to, because he said it's very important, the process of snap timing hold. and everything. He, mm-hmm. Yeah. So he said Tress is still going to do that. He's just not going to go out there and punt. So that's why they had to sign a guy. Plus, if you don't want him to do him too much punting in practice, you still need somebody out there to be punting and have you know for the return guys to get their work in it's mm-hmm. it's nice they got those machines that that simulate punts Inject and all that machines, but sure. yeah but there's there's nothing that can replace the real deal because those punt things are almost perfect all the time right so yeah. you know if you shank it what are you going to do how are you going to you know you need an actual punter and if tress is a little banged up they don't want to punt sign a guy bring him in don't worry yeah. Tress will be fine. I, I think the biggest thing with those machines is, like I said, they are perfect. That's going to be kind of a spiral, whereas a punter is going to give you end over end and sure. is going to try to get that backspin and try to do different things. And those are what the team really needs to work on as far as having an effective special teams unit. Yep. So, but uh, he wasn't officially signed yet. That's just from a source that he's going sure. to be signed. So, mm-hmm. if they do, you know, look for it sometime today or tonight. Somebody's got to go. Now it'll probably be somebody you'll be like, who's that? I never even heard of that guy. And you, you know, some fifth string defensive tackle or something. You'd be like, Oh, okay. Like when they, when they uh, uh, released a guy, a guard or something, offensive guard yeah. the other day, mm-hmm. we were all like, I had never even heard of that guy. Didn't even realize he was out there, but so there'll be some roster moves upcoming, but um, it'll probably happen after we're done here. Yeah, it was uh, signing. They re- most recently signed Jace Whitaker, released Keaton Sutherland. And yeah. He made a horrible uh, 24 <laughs> joke. Hey, uh, man, it was they good did, to, funny to me. It actually, uh, on the commander's website, just to clarify and self correct ourselves. So they did actually sign Kalu and Wadman last night. Uh, ah. Or so it was, what is, what is this, Tuesday? So this is, so they signed them this morning officially. Ah, okay. They uh, put 
both they put two players on injured reserve, Troy Apke and Curtis Brooks. There's your fifth Who's string Curtis defensive Brooks? tackle. Is literally, he a defensive tackle? literally called it. Literally <laughs> called it as a uh, as a defensive tackle. So both yeah. those signings happened this morning. Uh, both okay. players on and Good. two players hit injured reserve there. So Good correction. On, on the on the fly correction. And now on the fly is Terry McLaurin just getting an absolute beauty of a pass here. Video from the Burgundy Zone. Uh, just an excellent deep throw out to the side here. And then another video from Mason as Sam rolls out and gets a nice easy pass off here. Uh, just beautiful play from both uh, of those. Uh, Sam Howe, we have a Sam Howe tracker. Offense mm-hmm. looked pretty good today, Stoner. Yep. I, I agreed. So, I mean, do you have your markers ready? Because I'm ready. I, I feel like this is a good lead in right now for our tracker. Let's see where we got on the Sam Howell tracker. All right. We got our, we got our good and we got our not so good offense seemed to be really good today. Uh, I don't even think there were any picks by the defense, but to be honest, the, everyone seemed to be paying more attention to what was happening behind the scenes with the enemy and Ron Rivera, but there was a lot of reports out that Sam was very effective today. So uh, no bad um, reports. So here we go. This thing again. All right. So on the tracker, we've got, we're on the very last line and then we're going to have to do some, uh, some adjustments here. Some finagling. Yep. So I'm putting him down in the good side. That's three consecutive days of good. Yeah. And so, that all, that he was on the plus just yesterday. So this this yeah. means that this is now he's got plus two, right? He, seven he's seven to five. Seven to five. Yep. That's a, that's a good thing as we near more as we near actual preseason games. There is going to yep. be a preseason game this Friday. We expect Sam Howell maybe to get a drive and then sit the rest of the time. Um, but that is even in question. Logan Paulson talking to us on Friday about maybe not even playing any starters. So all that's going to be decided and will be interesting to see where they are. But three good days in a row, Stoner. Three in a row, man. It's looking good. Uh, even in that press conference, again, if you get a chance to watch EB, he said, we threw a ton at this offense. And they've been doing a good job of going home after practice, studying and coming back ready the next day, fixing some mistakes that they made on certain plays and even praised Howell about how far he's come. It's only been 12 days and how far he's come just in those 12 days. So things are looking up for Sam Howell and Sam Howell tracker three straight days of goods, which is hard for me to do. I, and yeah, I did it. Yeah. We'll see. Hey, you are only relaying the information. It's not That's difficult right. for you. You're not making the determination. You're just interpreting what's been put out there is interpreting uh, a word we're gonna make it a word so okay. three like good it. days for the offense and sam Howe. three good days here on your daily commanders update as uh, we provide you content every weekday at 7 30 tomorrow that's wednesday we're gonna be live so make sure you join us join that conversation and we would love to hear from you on how you feel about this eric the enemy situation how do you feel about sam Howe? and the process so far we're looking forward to the cleveland browns we got a great guest for you on friday but until next time wait before you do that i tried to bum rush you Uh, i'm gonna be at camp tomorrow there we go i'm gonna be at training camp i mean i'm gonna flood everybody with content throughout the day and tomorrow and all that so look for all that content yep look for all that great content right here on our youtube channel or wherever you find your audio We are on the Believe Network, and until next time, be a fan.